So I want to use an alien in a laundry basket UFO to talk about puppeteering, after effects, compositing, and even just special effects in general from a slightly different perspective. So a little while ago, this guy, this guy, and me decided to enter our local 48-hour film festival, which is where a bunch of filmmakers form up into little teams, you get together, and they give you a prompt, such as a line of dialogue, a prop, or just a theme. Once you get the prompt, you have to go, and in 48 hours, you have to write, shoot, edit, and deliver a three to eight minute film. Generally, this process has three distinct phases. One, crippling self-doubt during the writing and shooting phase. Two, extreme panic during the editing phase. And three, sacrificing small animals to the editing gods so that your computer will render this thing in time. <clears throat> Sorry. Our film Pancake actually ended up winning that festival, and I want to talk about one of the effects towards the end of the film where the alien that was in the fridge, they've now put in a laundry basket and... Get it off! Get it off! Get it off! You should just go watch it. It's still in the box. So the prompt for this film festival was simply the phrase, what goes up? So it only made sense for the film to end with the alien in the laundry basket flying away. But we didn't have any time to spend on the visual effects of making a laundry basket fly away into space. So we decided to use puppeteering to essentially get this shot from this. I mean, literally, that's a shovel and like a, a rake that we gaff taped to the back of this laundry basket. There's a, an LED like camping light inside the basket and he's got a leaf blower. But it works because the physics is completely organic. We're actually raising it in the air. It feels like it has weight to it because it does. It's like an old magician's trick where you're looking at the basket thinking that must be fake. Laundry baskets don't fly in my experience, but the effect isn't the laundry basket. It's not the motion or even the height of the basket. The effect is is taking out the, the puppeteers. And it works because you're not looking here to try and figure out what's wrong with this area. You're looking here thinking how in the world laundry baskets just don't, uh, don't, don't fly like that. So let's look at doing this inside of After Effects. So we brought our shot into After Effects, created a new comp, and let's look at what we have here. This is the shot of the laundry basket rising up into the air, and then we hold it up there for some reason and walk away. Now the reason we walked away is so that we had a clean plate in the background here that we could use and put behind our shot. So what we're going to do is Command Shift D and split this clip in half, and we'll bring this into the beginning of the shot here. This is going to go behind our whole effect we can cut ourselves out of the background here. So all of the animation of the basket is happening live on frame. So we decided to shake the basket and then have it kind of stop suddenly and then gently drift up in the air as if it was like building up to something and then poof, like the engine kicked in or something like that. So we'll probably need it up until this point here. So let's cut the clip there. So now this is gonna be our clip we're gonna work with. I'll bring the end position in and do trim comp to work area so that we're only working on the section of this that we want to be. We'll name this background layer clean plate and this top one is going to be alien. Let's double click on alien and click roto brush and simply draw on the section of the image we want it to keep and you'll see that the blue lines show us what we're keeping. Uh, and you can just keep drawing until you get every little bit of it that you want. If you see any parts that you don't want, like say it caught something over here, you would hold down Alt and draw red there to get rid of all that stuff. Great. This little line here is going to show us what our work area is. So we'll drag it all the way out to be the full length of this clip. And we'll hit Spacebar to play it through. And you'll see the roto brush just goes to work. It's almost too easy. Now I did notice some parts in there where the roto brush started to miss, where was it? Right there, boom. It stopped catching the edge there. So I'm going to zoom in and we might have to do this frame by frame, but that's okay. Even though we're doing it frame by frame, we're saving a ton of time. So we'll go forward. I'm hitting the page down key to move forward frame by frame. And basically we're going to let the roto brush do most of the work and just fix it when it makes mistakes. So I'm going forward one frame at a time and looking for any places where the roto brush. Oh, so down here it started to catch some of that. Let's deselect that, hold down Alt, keep going forward. And you can see we've already pretty much accomplished like a fourth of the shot in about 30, 45 seconds. So we're just going to keep paging forward here going through the whole thing, fixing the roto brush as it needs. 
and you're going to do this for the remainder of the shot. So this is not really a comprehensive roto brush tutorial. I'll link to some really good ones in the description if you're interested in that type of thing. So now the roto brush has done its thing and essentially we've got a mat created around the laundry basket that's going to be used to cut it out over top of our footage. So if we jump back into the composition panel, you can see that, yeah, our laundry basket is indeed floating through the air. And because we did all the animation live, there's not too much that I would want to actually change um, with the physics of how it's moving up in the air because it feels very organic to me. Um, but you could grab it and move it wherever you wanted to. So the next thing I want to do is sort of simulate some atmosphere or lens interaction with the light coming out of this basket. Let's pretend like we had a huge hazer and put a lot of atmosphere in the shot. Let's do a new adjustment layer. And there are going to be two ways to do this. One is going to be with CC light rays. And the other one will be with trap code shine. Shine is a paid product. So obviously it's a little bit nicer. It does some more things, but both would work. The general idea is that you're going to take the center of your light source, tell the plugin where it is, and just mess with the settings. I'm going to use shine for this example. So we will go into colorize. And I think I liked Aura best. Let's set our source point right on the basket. Our transfer mode is going to be screen. And maybe we'll turn the shine opacity down a little bit. Something like that. Just give it that kind of ghostly. Make a keyframe here. Hit U to bring up whatever keyframes are active on this. We'll call this layer shine while we're thinking about it. Actually, we'll call it light rays. And then we just keyframe this thing. So we'll move back and we're basically just adjusting it so that it sticks with the basket. A uh, pro tip is to go to the point where it stops moving, set a keyframe, and then to kind of fill in the middle in increments with something like this where it doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to kind of stick with it. So then you're not going frame by frame doing all this ridiculous work. It's generally tracking with it. Yeah. And that looks pretty good right there. So I love how you can see through and kind of tell that it's a laundry basket, but the shine seems to be blowing it out a little bit. So let's just grab HDR highlight compression and we'll put it before shine. We don't want all of it, but we'll just give it enough so that we can kind of get keep the idea of those holes in the basket. And that's a pretty passable looking shot. Now the final thing that I want to do is add a little bit of camera motion to it. So let's grab all of our layers, hit shift command or control and C and pre-comp everything. Now we've basically nested everything inside of this pre-comp, but we can move it all together as one. Let's hit P on the keyboard for position, hold down alt and click on the stopwatch. That'll allow us to type in an expression. We're going to type in the word wiggle, open bracket, point three comma 15, which means 0.3 times a second, it's going to move 15 pixels. So now if we preview this back, we can see that the camera's moving a little bit, but I think I want more motion. So let's try 35 and yeah, it's kind of swaying a little bit. I don't want it to look handheld. I just feel like it needs a little bit of something. Maybe we'll turn up the frequency. So let's do 0.9 humorously close to one. Yeah, I mean, that's a little intense. So you can kind of just mess around with that until you get some numbers that look like what you're going for. Yeah, I like that. So now that we've got just like a healthy dose of that fake camera motion we were looking for, we just want to fix the edges here. Because as you can see, since we're moving the shot around, we're able to see around the edges of it, and in the final render, it'll just be black bars, which doesn't look so professional. Luckily, we can use Motion Tile. If we drop that on here, click Mirror Edges, and then just extend the output width and height just arbitrarily, and the shot moves. And actually, you can just mirroring the shot way out into space. So there you have it, how to make a weird alien laundry basket fly. I hope this sparked some ideas for other things and applications you could use this for. Really, any of the other shots in here that look like effect shots are complete lies, and one of us is just kind of out of frame slightly. But for some reason, it works. 
It's not all about green screen and 3D, that's for sure. After all, just look at the old, um, the old puppeteered Yoda versus the new CG Yoda. I mean, it's just a huge, huge difference. The new one just looks so fake, and, and everybody does love that old Yoda. So I hope you got something from this. Thank you so much for watching.